Spiritual Teaching 265 Love Each Other 1. Disciples Come before my chair and meditate on my teachings. You will see how from your meditation you will come to find the essence that this word contains, which will reveal the true meaning of your life. 2. If men from the beginning and throughout all the ages had recognized that perfection of the Spirit constituted its purpose, another would have been its existence and others its works. But the man from his first steps, he considered himself the owner of what had only been loaned to him for a short time and used for impure everything that is entrusted to him for noble works. 3. See this world striving to discover with its science only the greatness and power of the earth, without worry about their spiritual improvement. And if the spirit does not develop its power or use the virtues that exist in him, there can be no peace in his life, no love, no feelings of true charity. 4. Many would like to free their spirit from that materialistic, flawed and selfish life that reigns in the world and cannot free themselves because the struggle to live is so complicated, bitter and difficult, that even the same spirit is tied to the concerns and problems of human life. 5. If your existence on earth were simpler, so the fight would be less and you would have freedom and time for your spirit to take care to fulfill the missions that correspond to him. 6. It is not for you, my little disciples, to carry out the transformation of humanity, because it is a work superior to your strength, but you must spread this divine message that will separate men from great mistakes in which they have lived. 7. This work of sowing the spiritual seed in such arid lands requires faith, love and effort like all big works, for which I tell you, you must not doubt for a moment the realization of my divine plans, because if you doubt, you will achieve nothing effective. It is up to you to act as members that you are of this set of disciples that I am preparing. 8. Do not believe that you are the initiators of this spiritual work. Understand that you are the continuators of other previous efforts, of other works made by your brothers in times past. 9. That is why I have told you that the doctrine that I have brought you today is the same as yesterday and always, that if you find any difference, this is superficial because the way in which I have manifested my teaching in each era has been in accordance with the spiritual evolution acquired by humanity and also according to the people to whom I have managed. 10. It was up to you to receive me at this time, your mission will be no less important than the one I entrusted to my envoys and apostles of times past. My word, together with the clarity of your works, will be the fertile seed destined to flourish in the heart of humanity. 11. Could you change, with my word and your example, the lives of men and peoples that for many centuries have lived in existence far from the spiritual? 12. Understand that first you have to prepare yourself until you become masters in this teaching, and then you can take to your siblings with love, as if they were toddlers, to take them step by step from the first lesson to the last. 13. Nobody wastes time as valuable as this is, or wait for the future to fulfill their mission without having duly taken advantage of the present that is for now the one that you should worry about, so that at the hour to fight you're not afraid, that your confidence in what you are going to preach is absolute and cast off the fear that your advice is easily destroyed by the eccentrics and materialized. 14. He who fears is because he is not fully convinced of my truth, and it is necessary to prove him, until the flame of faith rise from your heart. 15. When the disciple has achieved the grace to be a teacher, his presence and his words will be sweet, friendly, persuasive. You will act in a way that inspires confidence from the first moment. His words demonstrate that you truly have knowledge of what you are talking about, that there is absolute conviction in what he teaches and that a higher light inspires him. When the good disciple is attacked by his adversaries, he will know to wait for them in peace because your heart will fear nothing and because your trust in who taught you is full. 16. Truly I tell you, whoever wants to follow me to be my disciple, must leave the garment of hypocrisy and be covered with the purity and the truth that the Master saw, because I am the truth. 17. It is necessary that the sours of truth arise on earth, spreading my balm throughout all paths, so that the deaf hear and the blind see the light of my message. 18. God only wants good for his creatures. Blessed all those who help in the realization of that good. 19. The echo of my word and what you are doing has been known in many places, 
beyond where you believe and although the skeptical men to whom news of my communication has reached cannot believe a doctrine that transforms this world of discord into a fraternal family, I tell you, do not mind that disbelief, nor how many years must pass for them to convert. You fight, work for this work, because in this way you will gradually form a world of harmony and the seed will spread. 20. People. This moment is a test for you, take advantage of it. It won't do you any good to repent later and say, Lord, forgive my weakness. I tell you that with this you will not be able to recover the wasted opportunity, but with works and testimonies of my law. 21. I leave you this parental advice so that you can meditate on everything I have told you and just as your father in the heavens drew up a plan of love, life and teaching for their creatures, you too, inspired by him, you draw up a plan of love, humility, obedience, perseverance and redemption. 22. Man has been more concerned with his human life than with his spiritual life, even knowing many times that the human is temporary and the spiritual is eternal. That is the reason why, having advanced in their civilization and in their science, spiritually you are parked and dormant in your religions. 23. Observe one by one the religions and you will see that none is giving evidence of evolution, development or perfection. Each one is proclaimed as the highest truth and those who profess it, believing they find and knowing everything in it, do not strive to step forward. 24. Divine revelations, the law of God, my doctrine and my manifestations have made you understand from the principle that man is a being subject to evolution, why then do none of your religions justify or test this truth? I tell you that that doctrine that awakens the spirit, that makes it light, that develops it and reveals what he encloses, that I lift him up every time he stumbles and makes him walk forward, without stopping, that doctrine is inspired by the truth. And, isn't that what my teaching has revealed to you at all times? However, without spiritually you have stopped a long time ago, because you have been more concerned about your life on earth, than what corresponds to your spirit. But not to completely abandon what is spiritual, you have made your religions in such a way that they do not in the least interfere with the performance of your tasks, duties and jobs on earth. Already complying with that religious tradition you imagine you are, Fulfilling with God, you try to calm yourself before the consciousness and you think you are assuring your entry into glory. 25. How much ignorance, humanity, how long until you wake up to reality? Don't you realize that to comply with your religions, you give me nothing and neither do you provide anything to your spirit? 26. When you come out of your temples and say, I have already fulfilled with God, you have made a great mistake because you think you have come to give me something, when you should know that you have nothing to give me and yes much to receive from me and much to provide yourselves. 27. You believe that compliance with the law is reduced to attending those places, and that is another serious mistake because those places should be the school where the disciple was learning for later already on the path of life, put into practice the lesson learned, which is the true fulfillment of the law. 28. Do you see how much discord between brothers, how many tragedies between husbands, how much immorality and vices, how many wars between peoples? Everything is because of your abandonment and departure from divine laws. 29. Humanity lacks spiritual education, lacks knowledge of its evolution. 30. The intense pain that falls in multiple ways on this world is the effect of the faults committed by men no longer realize my justice, some blinded by ambition and others by hatred. 31. Who can abolish evil among men? Is it superhuman pain or an infinitely painful test? No, people. The pain will only stop you momentarily, but that moment will serve you to meditate, to clear up and calm down, and then you will feel the only strength, the only light that can save you, which is my law. 32. Disciples. Understand the significance of this revelation that I have given you, think about the importance of this message for the spirit of humanity, and then you will understand why I have come to speak to you and why my manifestation has remained for some time among you. 33. Ah, uh, if you all knew that by mentioning your religions and ways that you practice, I am not trying to judge you or hurt you. If you understood my divine yearning to find you loving one another and applying the doctrine of the spirit to your human life. But I know that your heart is still hardened and that you are going to persecute as you did in the past. My new emissaries and mock my new disclosures. 34. 
In spite of everything, my light, like the flash of lightning, will cross from the west to the east releasing spirits. 35. Pray, disciples, and may your prayer be the indication that you have understood this teaching, so that tomorrow express through your works the knowledge acquired in my lesson. 36. You must fight to understand the work that I have come to entrust to you, because it will be the only way you will achieve, is that your testimonies contain essence and truth. 37. Also understand that if your knowledge of my doctrine is not enough, your faith and your convictions will be in danger, when the enemies of the light attack my work in you. 38. I have told you that you will see spiritualists arise all over the world, even if they have not heard this word, and when you observe their practices and listen to their words, you will be amazed to see the intuition and vision so clear that from their spiritualism have had. But I also announce that after my departure groups and sects will appear calling themselves spiritualists, although their life and their works will be the denial of spirituality. They will come against you looking for your imperfections to deny yourselves and call yourselves impostors. Even if you doubt it, there will also be among these who have sustained themselves from this word, those who rise up against their brothers, brandishing weapons of confusion and vanity. 39. What weapons could you oppose to those forces if your faith is not firm and your knowledge is not great? 40. Do not think that I intend to give you weapons to defend your faith from threats. I don't want you to dispute much less you ignore them and close your doors to them. My will is that you remain serene in your position, so that you will never be surprised and that all who come to scrutinize you, find you praying and studying my word. 41. In the truth of your works will be the best weapons that you wield against those who would like to destroy you. 42. I want among my ranks firm soldiers, strong soldiers who know how to defend the truth, not legions of fanatics who in your ignorance, instead of honoring my work, profane it. I do not want crowds of men of little faith, who in the face of struggle cow and flee, feeling powerless to contend. 43. Analyze yourselves, and if after listening to me for so long, you feel incapable of fighting, that will make you understand that you have wasted my word, that you have not understood the purpose of my call and that you have slept, without listening to the warning voice that vibrates incessantly in my communication. 44. I do not come to tell you that you are lost and that you will necessarily have to be defeated by your persecutors. No, on the contrary, I come to tell you that the time is still ripe for you to carefully judge your works, whether they are spiritual or human nature, that you carefully observe your practices in order to discover everything that was wrong, superfluous and unworthy of my work. Once you achieve that there is truth and clarity in your practices, you will have nothing to fear, because true spiritualism will place you on the path of compliance with all laws, so no one can sanction you. 45. It is necessary for you to know that the weapons of faith will not be for you to defend yourself, but rather your responsibility will go beyond your person, because each one of you has been entrusted with a portion for which he has to watch, pray and fight until he gets out of the trials. 46. You will still be able to listen to me a few more dawns and affirm your knowledge and your faith. Then you will feel within your being an unknown force and unlimited trust. That security in yourself and that serenity before the fight will be given to you by faith and knowing how to value what you have found in my word. 47. I want you to form a people of peace. For this I wrap you in the mantle of my love. 48. Beloved people, Today you have spoken to me in the language of the Spirit and I have responded with my peace. 49. When you think that soon you will stop hearing this word that has been your bulwark, you are filled with sadness and you think that my coming at this time, apparently prolonged, was actually brief. But I ask you, what do you call my new coming? By chance, the period between 1866 and 1950 that marks the time when I am giving you my word? 50. Truly I tell you, this communication through human understanding has only been the preparation for you to enter the time of communication from spirit to spirit, in which you will have my new coming in fullness, in spirit on the cloud, as was announced in Bethany to my disciples. 51. Take this lesson that I give you through the spokesperson as the preparation for that time when it will not be the understanding the one who receives the light of the Master, but your spirit. 52. 
This is the new promise and the new goal for you. Do not forget that the message you have received through the spokesman has been given through man, and that man, however spiritualized he may be, is not completely clean of imperfections and impurities, with which you can already suppose the perfection with which you will receive the concert of my word when it reaches your spirit directly, without the need for intermediaries, without first having to go through your ears or your brain. It will arrive first at consciousness and this will be in charge of enlightening the spirit and ennoblement to the heart. 53. For a long time you have listened to this teaching, to which you have had to seek its essence to sustain yourself of something divine. Tomorrow, when you are ready to receive inspiration from spirit to spirit, it will not be a human word you receive in your spirit, but divine essence and that essence, you will take care of translating it into thoughts, words and in deeds, so that you may be the intermediaries between your Lord and humanity. 54. Understand, disciples, that this stage of communication through my spokesman has been in order to teach you to understanding the divine language, has been the elementary lesson of the teacher towards the toddlers. 55. Now, while you are listening to this word, you have the sensation of my presence, for which you fear the day when you don't listen to it. But, I tell you that when you are communicating with me from spirit to spirit, my presence will be felt by my disciples with greater clarity and purity. 56. Great will be the joy of those who feel this way in their hearts. They will never say, the master will soon leave or coming the day when the Lord leaves us without his word. No, then the disciples will know that the father has always been with the children, who has never left, who have been the men who have not always known how to be with me. 57. Today you say, God is in us, but you say it without feeling it or understanding it, because your materiality prevents you from feeling my presence in your being. But when spirituality is part of your life, then you will know the truth of my presence in every man. My voice will resound in the consciences. The inner judge will be heard and the warmth of the Father will be sensed. 58. I teach you a lot and prepare so that you receive with joy the arrival of the new time, but despite this, I see sadness in many hearts as the day of my last word approaches. Those who cry and let themselves be dejected out of sadness, they are the ones who, listening to me, have not understood me and will not know how to be prepared in the hour of trial. 59. I always told you, look for the divine essence at the bottom of this word that the spokesmen pour out in their ecstasy. If you conform only to the external form of these manifestations, you will come to give a divine appearance to some words that do not pass the human understanding, and you will be one step away from falling into a new fanaticism and a new idolatry. 60. It is necessary that you understand that you are destined to bring the good news to humanity, that you are going to teach your brothers with the love, patience and charity with which I have taught you, repeating the lessons when necessary and going back when it is necessary to remember the first pages. 61. Remember how on many occasions I have spoken to you about spiritual life since before man existed, of the appearance of man on earth, of my first mandates and my first revelations. Remember how often I am talking about the journey of humanity through the ages, its successes and its errors, its elevation and its decay, of the enlightened whose names are kept with respect by the great and lofty examples that they bequeathed, as well as the names of others whose wickedness indelibly wrote the history of mankind, so that none imitate them. 62. I have reminded you of the names of my envoys, through whom you received messages, commands, prophecies and lessons. 63. Thus, in a single lesson I have gathered the content of all past lessons. 64. Spiritualism is the inheritance in which the three testaments are united. In a single spiritual book. 65. All my lessons tend to prepare you for your struggle after 1950, a time when you will no longer listen to the spiritual world through faculties. He also has limited time for this form of communication. More, these blessed beings, guardians, counselors, comforters and protectors of this people, prepared you so that after this time you keep remembering them, feeling their presence and receiving their help. 66. What did the spirit world come for at this time? to explain my doctrine with his word and his works, to teach you to interpret my revelations and help you understand their essence. 67. They never gave you superfluous teachings, they never discovered you what is not yet time for you to know, 
They never came to awaken your curiosity or to suggest science or mysterious powers. His mission was another, his elevation and his light could not allow them to fall into vulgar materializations, because they had made the law of love the ideal of their spirit. 68. That spirit world came by divine mandate to communicate in human form for a short time, to leave the impression of his high brotherhood, the testimony of his existence and the proof of his presence among men. 69. They have told you that by ceasing to speak to you through human lips, they will not be absent from you, for on the contrary, they long for your sensitivity to allow you to feel their presence closer in future days. 70. If you, people, learn to use your gifts, if you truly come to harmonize with the spiritual world, I tell you truly, that on your path you will leave a mark of wonders. 71. It is necessary that at that time the strong of these multitudes, the good prophets, the good counselors, those who with their life and their words know how to lead the people along the path traced by the Master, those who know to keep the pages of my teaching immaculate. 72. Who are those forts I am talking about? I only tell you that I am preparing you with my word, so that when the end of this communication comes, rise up encouraging the people and with your faith do not let the crowds disintegrate. 73. The word that their lips pour will always remind you that I left you as witnesses of my communication with men, and they will tell you at every step that you are the ones indicated to announce to humanity that I have come in spirit. 74. I will no longer come to humanize myself or materialize myself among men. I will not come to incarnate on this earth. From this you will speak to your brothers. It is part of your cross, but I know that you can handle it. 75. Do not fear, I have already told you that what the Cyrenian did with Jesus when he saw him exhausted under the weight of his cross, now I come to do it. With all those who need my help, and I will know how to accompany you step by step to the top of the mountain which is your life, where you will rise on the cross of your destiny. 76. You will see how sweet it is to reach the consummation of a work, letting your heart open at that moment how the master's side was open to flow blood that spoke of love, of life, of forgiveness. 77. This is the doctrine that I have been sowing in the hearts of the Marian Trinitarian spiritualist people. 78. Spiritualist people because it receives the light of the Divine Spirit. Trinitarian because you recognize God under the three phases in those that have manifested itself to humanity, and Marian because you recognize divine tenderness as the scale that elevates you towards the Father, as the intercessor who comforts, consoles, and purifies you, turning away your pride and becoming children, full of meekness and humility before the Lord. 79. Do not forget that most sweet love, because you are not always ready to reach me, but if you trust her, soon you will feel their help. 80. Remember that if you were not like children, you will not be able to enter the kingdom of heaven. 81. There are those who come to tell me, Lord, I feel calm in my conscience. I have not killed, stolen, or adulterated. If these hearts that thus speak to me realize that it is possible to kill not only by taking life from the body, but also many times the heart, the mind, the spiritual tranquility can be killed, and that many times this crime is more important than that which has taken the existence of a body. 82. If they knew that it was possible to steal not only material things but also spiritual things, such as peace, virtue, or reputation, they would have a clearer idea of what moral or spiritual value mean compared to materials, to which humans attach so much importance. 83. Tomorrow, when your advancement and understanding are greater than they are now, you will know that many times you sinned with the thought more frequently and with greater importance than you did with your acts. That understanding will come to you when you know the power of thought about others. 84. Know that many of the works of the Spirit are done through thought. How can this be? You ask me. I tell you that all this nature that you contemplate and all that you still do not know about my works are nothing but the materialization of the thoughts of your Creator. 85. Nature is regarded by many as a God and as the creative source of all that exists, but truthfully I tell you, this nature from whose bosom all beings and Material things have sprouted is not creative. Before it was conceived and formed by the Divine Maker. She is not the beginning, nor the cause, nor the why of life. My peace be with you.